Many know A.J. Allmendinger as an outgoing, enthusiastic personality in NASCAR, and he's been a staple to the series in various different forms since 2006, when he debuted in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And he will be racing once again full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2023. But what many people might not know about A.J., or may have even simply forgot, A.J. raced in the IndyCar Series, or more specifically, the Champ Car World Series during the split era of IndyCar. In 2003, AJ signed with Carl Russo's Roos Sport team to race in the Toyota Atlantic Championship, and he would have an absolutely dominating season, scoring nine poles and winning seven races en route to a championship. The team would debut in Champ Car the following year in 2004, and obviously AJ was a perfect fit. For the team and getting that promotion. He would be teammates to Michelle Jourdain Jr. in a two-car effort. AJ would get two podiums and finish a respectable sixth place in the standings and overall in the season he would outperform Michelle Jourdain Jr. who also scored two podiums but would finish a disappointing 12th in the standings. AJ would also win Rookie of the Year in 2004. AJ would remain with the team in 2005 but this time his teammate would be the late Justin Wilson. AJ would have another solid year finishing 5th in the standings and scoring 5 podiums. However, he was outperformed by Justin Wilson who scored the team's first victory in the 2005 race in Toronto. Justin would also score another win at the final race in Mexico and finish third in the standings. The two drivers would remain paired up for the 2006 season and Justin Wilson got off to a pretty hot start while AJ had some struggles. And after only four races in the 2006 season, Roos Sport decided to replace AJ Allmendinger with the 2002 champion Cristiano D'Amata. This was even bigger surprise because Almendinger's last two races before this were a third and a fourth, which is not bad at all. AJ Almendinger helped kick Roos Sport off the ground to be what it was up until this point, but they believed that Cristiano D'Amata would be a greater threat to the defending champion Sebastian Bourdais and compete for more race wins. But only five days later, Forsyth Championship Racing announced that Almendinger would be their new driver and would replace Mario Dominguez. Forsyth was not pleased with Dominguez as in two of the first four races he collided with his teammate Paul Tracy on the first lap of the race. So this was a golden opportunity for AJ and Forsyth would not regret this decision. AJ would show speed instantly and qualify on the front row in the second position between the two Newman Haas cars. After the initial start of the race was called off, the green flag would wave and AJ would take the lead immediately. Green flag. Wilson on the outside. Allmendinger leads him through the festival curves. The race would go green straight through to the finish and AJ Allmendinger would make a huge statement and have an absolutely dominating day. AJ would lead 100 of 105 laps in the race and the only time he lost that lead was on pit stop cycles. Clean oh. racetrack in front of him. J.D. Wilbur puts the white flag in the air. There's Lynn, <laughs> Mom, Karen, Dad, Greg Allmendinger watching from the Forsyth Index pit box. And their heartbeat is as high as that being monitored in Nelson Phillips' car right now. 24-year-old A.J. Allmendinger from Denver, Colorado these days, although originally from California. There is Karen. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, this is, look at the tears. Look at the tears down Lynn's face. Remember in Edmonton a year ago, you called it Wallmendinger, Derek Daly. He, yeah, he, he was a one-man crash highlight reel halfway through last season, but here's the battle for second place. Bourdais trying, but he will not get there. Here comes Allmendinger down into the final quarters. History about to be made in the Champ Car World Series. A.J. Allmendinger wow. at age 24. AJ. The His crew first really like the soda. Forza they team. really like soda. Michael Cannon talking to him on the radio oh, and yeah. Fritz, the Almendinger winter yeah, has happened. AJ Almendinger gets it done in Portland. First race, new team after being fired, goes straight 
to the top of the podium. I love how the broadcast let the F-bomb slip there from AJ when he won the race. That was pretty funny. But to make things even sweeter, his former teammate Justin Wilson ended up finishing in the second spot. So he beat his old team to get this win. That would put AJ third in the standings and back into the championship hunt as well. Welcome back to Portland on CBS. Your winner is AJ Allmendinger. Yeah, Vegas. Well, and if you can see it through all the confetti, we have one excited AJ Allmendinger with tears of joy streaming down your face. AJ, you could not write a movie script any better than this one. Your thoughts? I just can't believe it. Like, uh, you know, I got to thank Forrest Arth and, and all the opportunity that they gave me this weekend. Uh, this this team, this crew, they're absolutely amazing, and they just they just did everything that they could for me this weekend, and they're awesome. And you know, Red Bull for sticking with me, Puma, my parents, my fiance, and uh, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk, but I just want to thank Carl for everything he did for me over the last three years. I wish I could have got the first one for him, but you know what? Thank you to Forsyth for giving me this opportunity. You mentioned Carl Russo, and right behind you was one of his cars, Justin Wilson, still your good friend. Did you Were you aware how close he was at one point on the approach to the festival curves? Oh, yeah. that uh, Unfortunately, Justin doesn't ever give up. Uh, I wish he would sometimes, but uh, the guy's absolutely amazing. I've said it since day one when I was his teammate, and I'll say it until uh, the day I retire. He's amazing, but uh, I knew if I could just hold him off and get through the lap traffic, my car was better. So I was just kind of trying to pace myself and and get through the traffic. The next race, the Champ Car Series, would head to the Cleveland Airport, and A.J. Allmendinger would pick up right where he left off in Portland, scoring the pole position for the race, which was his first career pole and a new track record for the Burke Lakefront Airport. scattering one car goes around it's one of the my jack cars i do believe we've had a couple of cars in the weeds already one of the Forsyth cars goes around that's tracy throwing up a rooster tail of dirt as he has problems derek he's knocked the front wing off that car well 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 i had my eye on paul tracy he made a safety to turn one and then it all went wrong left wheel is destroyed Bourdais is also off the racetrack as is Andrew Ranger. Ranger in the MyJack 27. We go caution immediately. We will not complete a lap under green. Let's have another look at what happened. Oh, one car way up in the air over Bourdais. Tracy, that is Tracy. Vaulted right over the top of Paul Tracy. They got wheels interlocked. So Tracy is off. The championship leader Bourdais is off. His day done very early. Two wins here at Cleveland. This will not be number three. Now, it looked like AJ got away clean and in the lead, but when all the focus was on the chaos behind him, Oriol Servia made a move on him and the two made contact, resulting AJ having to pit for a new front wing. So if he wanted this victory, he was definitely going to have to earn it. The caution flag was still out on lap eight, so the Forsyth team decided to bring both cars down pit road to fill them up with fuel and get on an alternate pit strategy as they were already at the back of the field. Almendinger would survive the chaos that happened throughout the rest of the day and on the ninth and final caution, he would be able to take the lead due to pit strategy. And from that point on, the race would go green and he would never look back and pick up his second win in a row and two out of two since joining Forsyth. But A.J. Allmendinger is going to win two straight. And Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. The weekend's fast qualifier in the Forsyth Indec Racing Car number seven. Wow. A.J. Allmendinger comes home a winner at Cleveland. Wow. This was action-packed. That was his dad, Greg, right there. Arms in the air. Junkera manages to be second. Junkera. And okay. Serbia, because Dominguez did not come around. Dominguez is stalled on the racetrack, too. Almendinger may run that thing out of fuel, trying to get some donuts going here. Okay, come on, AJ. There he goes. Let's see. I'm going to judge them. Bruno Shankara somehow okay. stole second. I wasn't too impressed with Portland, so he said he's going to impress me today.
the following race in Toronto, AJ would continue to show great pace and he would start on the front row in the second position. Probably ideal temperature, but don't take your eye off these blue cars. Almendinger ahead of Tracy. Wilson skates off to an early lead. They're on board the CDW car briefly. Oh, what's Tracy again? The end of this long back straight in the break zone. Oh, we're safe again. On the digger second. AJ would take the lead for the first time in the race on lap 35 due to varying pit strategies. On lap 64, leader Nelson Felipe would dive into pit road, giving AJ Allmendinger the lead. And from this point on, AJ would never look back for the rest of the race, and he would go on to win his third race in a row, his third since joining Forsyth Racing, and he would complete a hat trick in Toronto. Oh, A.J. Allmendinger, a couple of turns from home at Exhibition Place. Unbelievable, Derek Daly. Two turns to go. And the young driver out of California is going to win three in a row. There it is. He says, pinch me and tell me this is real. A.J. Allmendinger for Forsyth Championship oh. Racing brings the index car number seven home. A hat trick indeed for Forsyth Championship Racing. And the scoreboard on the team, AJ3, PT0. Yep. And at there this they point. are, side by side. PT says, Congratulations. I think that's what he said. Unfortunately for AJ, the winning streak would eventually come to an end at the next race, but it's truly a fascinating part of IndyCar history that he was able to get fired from a team, join a new team, and win the first three races that he competed for that team. And because of this, this really put AJ Allmendinger on the racing world's map. As before this happened, I really didn't know much about AJ, but he became a superstar in racing. Back when he joined the Champ Car Series in 2004, he became a Red Bull athlete and they stuck with him despite his firing to this new team and that would end up having a huge impact on his career. As AJ would go on to win two more races that year in Denver and Elkhart Lake at Road America and he would end up finishing third in the standings. He also did not race the last race of the year at Mexico City as going back to that Red Bull contract I mentioned. Red Bull decided to move him to the NASCAR Cup Series to be one of their two drivers as they ventured into NASCAR. <laughs> Once he made that transition, things were pretty rough for him, but his 2006 Champ Car season would definitely go down as one of the craziest in IndyCar history, and I think AJ winning those three races in a row is one of the most underappreciated moments in motorsports, especially at that time how dominant Sebastian Bourdais was in the Champ Car Series, where he won every single race to start the year up until AJ made that start at Portland with Forsyth. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this one. This was a fun one to make. Do you remember when AJ Allmendinger was an IndyCar driver? Leave a comment down below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you subscribe to the channel for more great IndyCar content and I hope to see you guys again. As always, take care.